Hello and welcome to Hardware Intel, the in-ear edition. The podcast from UAP exploring how hardware can help shape our future. From households to large-scale industrial, we're going to be discussing a wide range of topics with expert insight from within the building industry and thoughtful opinions about how hardware is advancing communities all around the world. Um, so since uh, the Hackett report has come out, um, part of the regulations now is that they're actually turning around and saying that the building owner who is responsible for the, uh, the actual building has to do their own inspections. I'm Cyan Astley, a TV presenter and property expert, and I'm fascinated by the impact that good hardware solutions can have on all of our lives. In today's episode, we're talking about hardware safety for global urbanisation. Joining me is Richard Morris, the National New Business Development Manager at UAP, and Bill Murray, General Manager at Locking Systems. Welcome to Hardware Intel. Tell me a little bit about yourselves. Would you start, Richard? Uh, yeah, um, I've been working for UAP for coming up to seven years. Um, I've been in the industry itself or the architectural ironmongery kind of world that we're in for uh, up to 15 years now. Um, and I've seen a, a big increase and a big demand for our hardware and also the quality of hardware across the, across the business, really. And what about you, Bill? Are you, um, are you part of the UAP family? Yes, I, I am. Yeah, we've locking systems was um, acquired by UAP, but regarding the industry, I've been in the industry since 1987, so plenty of years of experience. As has the team that worked for me at Locking Systems. Everybody within Locking Systems has worked within the industry for at least a minimum of fifteen years. So a small team, but very, very um, well experienced and an in-depth lot of knowledge within not just locking systems, but the safety hardware industry as a whole. And what's the strategic importance for UIP on the the acquisition of of locking systems? Why why that diversification? Um, I think realistically, the way that we've added in uh, locking systems to our portfolio is it marries up quite nicely with what we're trying to achieve in regards to working with a customer where we can offer them a complete solution. So when they're coming to us for products that go on to a, a, a door set, as they're called, um, uh, a master keyed cylinder suite is the final part then, which really does give that ability to give a a full, complete door set solution from one manufacturer. Would you add anything to that, Bill? What, what, are the, what, are the, what do you bring to the table for UAP? Yeah, I think it's given, given the, the UAP range a, a more in-depth range. So UAP has always done cylinders, but it hasn't always done um, mask heat cylinders, um, certainly not to the depth that locking systems has done. Um, in the past, um, UAP's done mosque systems maybe ranging up to a couple of hundred cylinders where locking systems has recently supplied jobs up to um maybe twenty thousand cylinders on one mosque system so quite a large extents of systems and quite a large um base of knowledge within the industry mm. well that brings me on absolutely brilliantly to actually to my first question question which is as buildings have got bigger and much more technologically advanced how much have the levels of security changed in the last decade because this is something which is completely your area of expertise isn't it yeah the, so certainly the, the last major change that, that, that I'm, I'm aware of was the introduction of um, building regulations par q1 um, that was actually introduced back in 2010 so it's not really recent it's certainly within the last decade and the reason for introducing that was for the need for new dwellings to actually to be more secure and resistant to unauthorised entry. What that actually done, that actually led to the introduction of um, what's now called PAS 24. And that's an actual um, standard for secure door sets. If you think about a secure door set, a door set comprised of the door itself, the handles, the hinge, any locking device. So within that PAS 24, um, part of the hardware um, or part of the integral hardware is the actual cylinder um, and UAP can actually offer both one star and three star rated cylinders within the past 24 door set range. So as buildings have got bigger just the whole systems get much much more complicated 
sometimes the larger systems although that they're very large um, for example the one example I gave before 20,000 cylinders it's very large we're probably about halfway through supplying that it's over a stage of a three-year build is that a residential is that a, reg a residential development what actually is that it's a mix of residential and commercial so some of the buildings have commercial properties at the bottom of them and then as you go up the levels they've actually got residential so it's a mix of both um, and that has got um, anywhere up to 56 floors of residential apartments so quite a lot of um, quite a lot of apartments quite a lot of residents um, like I say it's it is quite a large system but it's not very complex um, but we we can do complex systems there's a also a job that I can think of that we've done the last five year up in Scotland um, a different sector it's not residential um, this was more for um, the health sector it was for a large hospital in Glasgow that had three and a half thousand cylinders again quite a large quite a large system but it was really really complex so how do you decide what level of security is suitable for each customer for each project well the first question that we always ask is how does the customer or the client who actually owns the building how do they want to control their replacement keys so once the building's handed over to the client do they want to be able to go down to a local locksmith and have their key cut which means that there's no control over the duplication of keys or do they want to have have the keys not being cut locally but to be able to come back to source so again it's weighing up the convenience versus the security do you want to have the convenience of having keys cut within an hour and um, that is great but again it's not very secure um, or would you prefer to have something that's more secure where the convenience isn't there you should be able to get keys done within 24 to 48 hours but it's a much more secure system you can't walk into a local locksmith or to a local heel bar and have your keys cut. And you need to do a lot of research uh, into each project when deciding which master key is suitable. How do you, do you work obviously very closely with the developers? Yes, that, that, that's correct. Certainly on the larger systems, what we like to do, we like to attend site, speak to the contractor, speak to the architect and also speak to the client. All those three parties will have three different opinions on how they want the building to work. So what we try to do, we try to get all three parties around the table and discuss what the um, what the end purpose of the building will be. And then a lot of that will be defined by how many doors are in the building, how many users are in the building, and also how many key holders they, they want. So you may have a thousand users in the building, but maybe only have a hundred key holders. So again, it's trying to understand how many key holders and which area those key holders want to have access to. So is this a really new direction for UAP, Richard? Um, obviously, Bill is, is the expert in these larger buildings. And is this a new direction, somewhere, something where you, you felt you really needed to get that expert input, which is hence the acquisition? Yes, uh, what, what I believe is that it just adds to that extra layer of what UAP is trying to achieve. We're, we're trying to achieve... Uh, a consistent quality product that is now becoming more and more uh, aware in the public domain of what a fire door is. A lot of people that live in a, a in, a, in a, a an apartment or a block of flats or anywhere where there's a fire door is needed, I believe that a fire door has been not seen as something that's you know noticeable by a, a member of the general public. Now there's more awareness after obviously the the issues that we've had with with Grenville and other. Uh, other sites as well is that by having that awareness of a, of a product it's by adding in keying systems into that system it it just means that we're able to offer a much more uh, consistent package and and obviously the security element is very important how does the size of the building impact the level of security that's needed well realistically what you'd find is again as bill mentioned it's it's mainly architect or specified uh, specified lead for a project. Um, in most cases, if it's a block of flats uh, or apartments, you'd have a flat entrance door that has an element of security on it, which could have an electronic uh, system of access. And then individual flats actually then have a reduced level of security inbuilt into those doors. So you could have 
uh, a one star system that could be specified for a flat entrance door which would then have to have a thumb turn for, for fire escape um, as a means of exit um, and again it's 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 down to the individual um, manufacturer or the the actual custom themselves what who what they want to specify I, I believe that would be correct isn't it Bill? Yeah that, that's absolutely correct Richard yeah. Are there any limitations with master key cylinders? Hmm difficult question um, we've certainly not come across a job that we've found that is too large um, so the answer to that is no but I'd look forward to seeing one. Okay, <laughs> if someone could conjure one up for you. And what about timescales? How long do these projects take to organise? Is that a relatively quick turnaround if somebody comes to you with a challenge? Yeah, if, if somebody comes and, and wants a, a straightforward master key system or something that's um, got one or two levels of key control and it's under 100 cylinders, the lead time tends to be 7 to 10 working days. Obviously, if it's project-led, where it's got multiple floors, multiple contractors are involved... Um, different contractors will be doing the fit out at different stages that tends to be led by the contractor so the contractor may give us the order and they may say right one subcontractor wants to hand over doors in January another subcontractor wants to hand over the doors in February so again that will be very much led by by the main contractor or the contractor Richard mentioned something earlier, a little bit earlier, where um, obviously security is something that's that's really so important. But it's not only people being sort of locked in, but how do they then get out? So is that something that you've had to think about security versus fire and how people get out of the building, an incredibly secure building? I'll let Richard answer that one. He's the fire door specialist. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, basically uh, what the situation is, is that it's all well and good having a fire door that works uh, and locks correctly because with uh, the basics of a fire door, when that fire door is closed, obviously a fire door uh, has the ability to close via a door closer. That's the first way of ensuring that that fire door is doing its job with the perimeter seals and will act in a in a fire situation if necessary. Um, then obviously when that door is closed, they can lock that, that customer can lock that door themselves to f- ensure that no one can gain access to that flat. Um, but obviously in a means of a fire, if, that, if it's a person in the flat and that person doesn't live there, for example, they need to be able to get out to that property or the, the actual flat as quickly as possible with as least actions as possible. So the idea is with a, with a door cylinder, you have a thumb turn on it, which rotates to open the door and then you just depress the handle, which everybody would know how to do those two actions um, to ensure that you've got a means of escape. Since then, with uh, mentioning back to what Bill mentioned on the past 24 uh, testing as we do, it's now an element of past 24 testing where we have to test for letter plates as well because that's a massive uh, uh, demand these days where customers still want to have a letter plate in their door and obviously it's a very big aperture in a door. Uh, and that has led us on to designing and manufacturing a new product uh, called the TSW8 Cetarian letter plate, where it gives the function of a, a normal looking letter plate with the mm. fire uh, ability of it as well built in to obviously to, to, to do an FD30 door, a 60 minute FD60 door. Um, but you still need security because you can't let people put their hands or manipulate a cylinder through that uh, yeah. door set. What's the biggest project that you've both been involved in? The largest project for, for cylinders is, is one that, that we're currently involved in. It's um, a multi building project in the southeast. Um, the biggest challenge for that was trying to design a system uh, across 23 different buildings. Each building have, have not at least 20 floors. So what the contractor wanted, he wanted one key that could operate each floor or every door on each floor across all um, all the buildings. So that was one challenge. Um, and then they also wanted each building to have its own master key. So the master key for building one could only operate all the doors on building one, couldn't operate anything on two or three or four. And then they also wanted, um, within each building, they also wanted um, one key that um, would actually only go through certain doors. So one key would go through all the doors on floor one, um, all the 
doors on floor two in building two and so on so that was complex and, and it was quite a large one but it's only about 40 percent of the way through it it'll be ongoing now for the next three or four years it's all your fault is it richard you're the one that goes out and gets these big contracts and leaves bill scratching his head <laughs> uh well yeah what, what what we're trying to do is again with 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 our customers is to to look at forecasts and especially in, and obviously after COVID has, has occurred, the, the need for forecasts and the ability to, to plan ahead is always something that we're trying to educate our customers to, to try to go down that route. And as Bill mentioned, they, they still, still expect a product within a very small time scale, which we try our best to, to, to do that. But mm. it's, 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 it's always a, a, the old uh, duck principle where, you know, or the swan principle of how we do it, but uh, we do yeah. get there most most of the occasions, yes. So you've done numerous projects for a wide range of clients. What are the main challenges when coming up with security plans for different industries? Yes, we're architect-led. In most cases, the, uh, the way a door set is designed is it has to be a past 24 door set, so then it has to have a certain number of elements on that door that comply and then be tested to that standard and then also tested for fire as well. And that's either a British standard or more and more, more requests now are being for an EN standard. So local authorities, especially London Borough Councils, are looking for an EN standard fire door test um, with a past 24 2016 standard, which is the latest standard. So if that's what's been specified by an architect, via councils or social housing, then the manufacturer of those door sets have to comply and that's where we can support that customer making that door with the, using the correct hardware on that door set. Are there very different demands from different industries? If, if you're in say, schools or residential, hospitals, is it very different, the demands from the different industries? Yes. Uh, so for a social housing uh, customer, they could still have different standards or use different uh, standards out in the marketplace at this current time. Uh, then you have a trade door which will go into like a new build environment. They won't need a fire uh, side of the business realistically. It would mainly be a, um, a PAS 24 standard and even in some cases they want to not use a PAS 24 standard and go down the document queue route which is still building regs approved but they don't need to have the, the actual door or the door set tested to a PAS 24 standard. Um, and then schools Again, they have a different way of working. There'll be fire uh, elements that they would need to cover for fire doors, uh, FD30 and fire door with smoke. Um, and it will only be the external doors then that will need to have a past 24 element to them. Yeah, because from, from a security aspect, there's probably two two considerations. Isn't there? there? There's the physical security. Um, so how can you actually stop somebody actually gaining unauthorised entry? Um, that would be on your perimeter doors and then you've also got the other side which is the security of being able to um, have keys duplicated um, locally whether or not you want that to be done locally or not so unauthorized duplication of keys so that there's two aspects um, the physical security and the key duplication do you ever have situations with industries where they want to keep people in I mean, how, say, how, <laughs> I'm not thinking prisons necessarily, but say nurseries where you you know you want to keep children in buildings. How do how do you balance those? Yeah, that's that, that's a that's a very very good point. Um, locking systems does a number of different functions um, that actually provide people with the, the functionality that they're that they're they're, ask, they're asking for. So one is um, a classroom function, so ideal for classrooms or for education. And how that works is if the teacher leaves the classroom and locks the door behind them, um, the children can always um, unlock the door um, and, and come out. So if there is a fire that they're never actually locked in, that they can always actually leave the building. But on the flip side to that, if the teacher leaves the classroom um, the, and she does not lock the door, the children cannot lock the teacher out. So they can always unlock but they can never lock. We've touched actually already on fire prevention as a topic that's been in the news over the last few years, in particular with buildings in highly populated areas. How have new regulations affected planning for new buildings? Right, um, well, I well, obviously after the, the Granville situation and the Hackett report that came out after that, um, 
obviously what we're finding is being led again by uh, social housing uh, associations or especially the London Borough Councils, they are taking the lead in ensuring whatever is m made into a, a block of flats or designed into a block of flats um, is not just compliant but uh, above and beyond what is actually needed in a, in, a, in a fire door element. Obviously there's many different elements that go into creating a uh, uh, a, a building or building fabric of the structure but our element that we obviously have to worry about is the fire door itself which in itself is enough to worry about and you know what the aim is is that in the past you'd have a, a fire door like an FD30 fire door which was designed to last 30 minutes now that door would have passed 30 minutes and maybe got 32 minutes or 33 minutes of passing which does its job um, what is no, more and more of a requisite now is that a door set will pass the 40 or 45 minute mark. So it even, it, it gives a much more consistency and a lot more, uh, a, I suppose, a cover in regards to what that door is actually capable of doing. And so our products or our elements of the door that go on, um, again, have to perform at much higher standards, a lot more consistency in that product and that's what as UAP have been working on to ensure that that's what's happening. Now I believe that customers whether that's in social housing or big buildings are they actually being encouraged to do their own fire door safety testing so is that like self-certification? Uh, it wouldn't be the individual that lives in the in the flat uh, they have their own responsibility to ensure that they don't damage the door and mm -hmm. that they ensure that that door is working correctly because of what you find is a lot of uh, customers or people that are living in the actual homeowners um, try to stop those doors from working correctly uh, by disconnecting the door closers or by propping them open with blocks of wood or anything they can find just to keep those doors open in lots of cases. Yeah. Um, so since uh, the Hackett report has come out, um, part of the regulations now is that they're actually turning around and saying that the building owner who is responsible for the uh, the actual building has to do their own inspections um, mm -hmm. and also have fire wardens so that building has to have a fire warden that will actually travel around that building on a, a couple of occasions on a daily basis looking for any risks of fire so you can't put any um, combustible materials out onto uh, your kind of floor space outside your flat mm -hmm. you need to make sure all those fire doors are kept shut and that's if those things are in place, then realistically the, the, the chances of fire or fire spreading uh, are greatly reduced. That's a, a great responsibility, it's a big responsibility on a building owner, isn't it, to constantly be going around monitoring what the building's inhabitants, whether that's commercial or residential, are doing on a day-to-day -day basis, because that could change almost hourly, really, couldn't it? That's correct. So I think the onus is on the actual individual to be aware of what their responsibility is in keeping their door shut um, and then obviously from a from a warden perspective all the spaces that are outside of that fa uh, that flat entrance door now are all non-combustible products so when you go into these new blocks of flats or even older blocks of flats you'll find very very small chance of anything that's combustible in those mm. Meet, uh, those escape kind of channels, they have a stairwell, all those means of escape are, are safe areas. So you yourself, Richard, have done courses on how to do those fire door inspections. How's that knowledge that you've gained affected your working methods? Um, well, with the fire door inspection scheme, which is uh, run by the BWF, which is the British Woodworking Federation, they, they, they wanted to bring people together to have a competent way of looking at a door to make sure that that door is effective and doing its job. So there are lots of elements on that door or door set to make sure that that does happen. Um, and from our perspective, as a cust as going into our customers, we have the ability and some confidence to turn around and say, we can support and then there, you. Are there other things changing in terms of security where you think oh you know we need to be we need to be ahead of that or we need to be um you know covering that that technology that's arriving again very similar to richard we're very much led by um european standards um certainly for cylinders the current standards en 1303 
Um, so that's what we're led by. Um, the only other thing that we try to inc include and improve on is new functionality. Um, so different functions, so that there may be an instance where somebody will come up and they want a specific function for a specific building where we've never came across before. So it's more development of functionality rather than a standard. It's been really interesting talking to you both and, and hearing about this side of the industry. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your expertise. That's all for this episode of the Hardware Intel podcast. Thank you so much again to Richard Morris and to Bill Murray. We'll be back next month when we'll be talking about the product testing process with Julian Roberts and John McLaughlin. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.